Hey guys, welcome to uh, our time together in the Word as we spend time going through the Gospel of Matthew. Now this is a very cool one because on Sunday morning, now if you go to Calvary Salt Lake City, which is a great church with a really cool pastor, hello. Uh, well, if you go to Calvary Salt Lake then you heard this message, um, I kind of detailed this passage that we're going to talk about today. I, I mentioned last time that it's like two ships that we're going to pass in the night here is that we, I got the teaching I'm doing on Sunday morning. I'm talking about the life of Simon Peter. And then I'm taking you through the Gospel of Matthew here. I'm also teaching the Gospel of John out at the out at the thrift store on, on uh, Thursday night. And uh, and on Wednesday night, I'm getting ready to teach the book of Daniel, you know, with you guys. So, so we're all over the map. But this is a fun one because this text, not only did I preach it last Sunday, and you can go on there online and listen to what I said there, but I'm going to go with it. I'll, I'll go over with it right now. And to kind of keep in our in our flow of this study of the Gospel of Matthew, would you join me in prayer? Get your Bible out. Matthew chapter um, fourteen is where we're at, and uh, and join me in prayer. Father, we love you and praise the Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness and your love and your mercy, Lord. Just open your Word to us. Help us to hear your voice. We trust in you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, "Come on, say it out loud." Amen and amen. All right. So I stopped us last time as we were looking at the feeding of the multitudes, and we kind of went through that and saw saw that uh, the little that we are in the hands of Jesus can do something great. I love that. I love that whole message. The little that we are, the little you know, the loaves and the fishes of the child, that what he had, the little that he had was great in the hands of Jesus. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you that the little that we are in the hands of Jesus can do great things. And we talked about that last time. And uh, and I stopped right here because look at the word in verse 22 of, of, again, Matthew chapter 14. It says, immediately he made his disciples get in the boat and go before him to the other side while, his, while he dismissed the crowd. Immediately. It's the same thing in Mark's gospel. Immediately. It means like right now. Right now, and then, and then he made literally. It almost has the idea of, of a violent grabbing them, put them in the boat, go get out of here. You guys got to get out of here. Now the cool thing is, is that we have this story in Matthew, Mark, and and uh, John uh, tell this story. When John tells the story now, uh, John tells us what's going on because the crowds are coming at him. They're gonna make him king, and he's like. Okay, so so he just fed the multitudes. They're looking for a king. They don't understand what a king is all about. Uh, they don't understand that the, Jesus is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, but, but not to come as the king yet. Now he's coming as the savior in our text. He's coming back as the king of kings, Lord of lords. Have you been with us on Wednesday night? As we're looking at the book of Revelation, he is coming back, the, you know, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, so, so he sees the crowds. They're getting ready to come and take him by force. And he says, oh, wait, wait. Hey, guys, come on, get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. No, no, Peter, come on. Come on. Get in the boat. Got him in the boat. Shoved him off, shoved him off the, sh the shore right into the water, right into a storm. Think about that. Shoved him straight off in the water. And then he sent the crowds away. All right. So there's something going on here beyond just, you know, they, they meandered, got in the boat. No, he put them in the boat. Why did he do that? Because they weren't ready. They didn't understand, uh, you know, about Jesus. Uh, you know, they would have, they'd have been with the crowd saying, yes, let's make him king. Let's make him king. And so he sends the crowd away. And, uh, and he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. Now he's up on that mountain now. Uh, for some of you at Calvary, uh, back a few weeks ago, I showed you a map and I showed you some pictures of the Sea of Galilee. So you can anywhere on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, especially in that area uh, of uh, Capernaum and, and Bethsaida, that area right there where this the, this event would have taken place, uh, where that took place, anywhere there, as you're looking down, as you're looking down, you can see the entire lake. All right, so it's just a big lake, big freshwater lake. So he's up on this, he's up, he sent him, sent away, send the crowds away, push the guys in the boat. He's up on a hill and he's praying for him. He sees them down there. He's he's watching them. Okay, so when the boat was, uh, uh, let's see, the boat by this time was a long way from the land. So they were out in the middle of this lake. Uh, they uh, beaten by the waves. The wind was against them. It was about the fourth watch of the night, which is about three. Fourth watch is about three to six 
at, in the morning, all right? So they've been doing this. If you kind of get the chronology of this, they've been at this eight or nine hours, been out there fighting this storm, right? So they're beat. They are, they're having a hard time. Now, to kind of get what's going on here, let me, uh, let's pause this here in Matthew. Turn over to uh, Mark's gospel. Take a right in your Bible. Go to Mark chapter 6, and then we'll come right back to Matthew. I want to show you this. Let's look at this. Let's look at the parallel account. Uh, Mark chapter 6, look at verse 45. Immediately he made his disciples get in the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, where he, well, he dismissed, dismissed, the, dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave, he went up on a mountain to pray. And when it was evening had come, the boat was out in the sea, and he was alone on the land. Okay, so again, that's kind of what we've already seen. He's up on there. He's praying for them. He sees them. They're out in the lake. He saw that they were, and I like what it says here in verse 48. And he saw they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. Okay, they were, uh, New King James, they're straining at the oars, painfully, straining. That word is also uh, translated in some places as they were tormented. Okay, they're like going, we're not getting anywhere. We're going to sink. This is horrible. Uh, now, now think about this. These are fishermen. These are guys that grew up on that lake. There's something way more going on here than just a storm. All right. A lot of this stuff is supernatural. And so they're struggling at the oars, struggling at the oars. Um, it's about the fourth watch of the night. So it's three to six in the morning. He came, now Jesus came to them uh, walking on the water, okay? Here he goes, you know. Now, now, now listen to this. He, he came walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. He meant to pass by them. Uh, what he was doing, hold on a second. Let me, let me get this out. Um, all right. I don't want to miss a point with you guys. Um, okay, good. All right, okay. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, no, he meant to pass by. Um, literally, what's going on here is they're out there struggling. He sees them. He's been praying for them, right? And he's going to walk by. All he's doing is going to the other side. He's just going to wait for him over there. So he just, walk, instead of walking around, probably would took him all night, he just, I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm just going to walk across the water in the storm. So he starts walking across. What does that tell you? I believe what's going on here is Jesus is not going, hey, look, guys, look what I can do, you know, <laughs> you know, look what I can do. I don't believe that's what's going on. I believe what's going on here is that you got this. You guys got this, all right? I'm going to walk by. I'll meet you over there. You have this. You have this. All right, you got this. But when they saw him on the water, they say, oh, no, it's a ghost. It's a ghost, you know. They're dealing with their fears. These are part tough fishermen. Uh, no, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. They had a superstition in Bible times that a person that died on the water, his spirit would be on the water, right? I did things. I did a thing probably, probably, uh, oh, it was probably two years ago. I probably should revisit it. Uh, I did a whole Sunday morning on uh, ghost hunting. Okay, what does the Bible say about ghosts? Are they your lost relatives, all right? Uh, bottom line is on that, and you can probably go online and find that message about ghosts. Uh, I thought it was actually a pretty good study. Uh, the bottom line is this, is that no, Christians, you shouldn't be ghost hunting. Are there ghosts? Are there apparitions? Are there demons? Are there spirits? Is there a spiritual realm? Yes, there is. The Bible says that is not for you. The Bible says you're not to be talking to the dead, meaning you can talk to the dead. All right, now where do they come from and all that? That's, that's a big, big topic. But here's the thing is that that it's not for you as a child of God. If you see a spirit, let me tell you how to deal with it. And I've dealt with this before. I've dealt with it several times. I, I mean, no, I've dealt with it many times in my life. Let me tell you how you deal with it. In the name of Jesus, I resist you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. All right? I've had to chase things off. I've had things come after me. I've been scratched. I've been pushed. All right? I've had all kinds of, got all kinds of stories that have happened over my life following Jesus. All right? There is a spiritual realm. I get that. Uh, but the thing is, is, I don't mess with it. I just say the name of Jesus. You know, you're out of here. You know, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Resist the, resist the devil, the top guy. Resist the top guy, the devil. He will flee from you. How do I resist him? Through the word of God. All right, so you got that? Write that down. All right, write that down. How do I resist the devil? You know, how do I resist the devil? By the word of God. How did Jesus, how did Jesus deal with the devil? It is written. It is written. 
How do I deal with it? I, you know, when the devil knocks on my door, what do I do? I tell him, hey, Jesus, it's for you, All right? Okay, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, in me. Not greater is he that is me, I'm nobody, all right? I will drop and wet myself, right? That ain't me, all right? No, uh -uh. here's the deal. It's greater is he that is in me. It's the spirit of God that's in me. It's the power of God that's in me. I trust God. I trust God, the power of God that's in me. Listen to this. Did I write something? I wrote some stuff down here. I was, I was thinking about some of this. Um, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you? So yeah, the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. 2 Timothy 1 says, the good thing which are committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. Romans chapter 8 says, and if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, you have the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Come on, you want a piece of this? All right, devil, you want a piece of this? Leave me alone. Don't come near me, Jesus. It's for you. It's for you. I resist the devil. How do I resist him? I run to Jesus. I run to Jesus. All right. I can do an hour right there because I've dealt with this a lot in my life. All right. I don't want to do that. I'm just saying, hey, they looked at him and thought it was a ghost. Ah, it's a ghost. Ah. All right. Um, Jesus see that and he says, oh, chill, dudes. Dudes, chill. He don't say it that way. He says, he says, very, very King James. Take heart, take heart, and don't be afraid. Take heart, don't be afraid. Okay, then he got into the boat. Well, let's go back to go back to this. I just want you to see out of Mark's gospel that he saw them straining at the oars. He was praying for them, and when he was walking on the water, he was gonna walk, he was just gonna walk right past them. And I believe this, I believe this is true. That sound that sounded like a terrible, difficult thing. God was with them, Jesus was praying for them, they had it. They had it. Okay, you got this. I think sometimes we need to tell each other, hey, you got this. You got this. It's okay. And so here's what happened. Back to Matthew chapter 14. It says, in the fourth watch, look at verse 25. In the fourth watch, it came to them walking on the sea. The disciples saw him walking on the sea. They're terrified. says, it's a ghost. Ah! Okay. And they cried out in fear. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them and says, take heart. It's I. I am. Okay. Some of your little study books, notes will say, I am, okay? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The Bible has, uh, has over and over again, the heroes of faith had to be told, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, okay? Don't be afraid, Joshua, while you're coming into the land, or Moses before him. Don't be afraid, okay? The apostle Paul had to be told, don't be afraid, all right? You, me, don't be afraid. God is not the author of fear, okay? If you got fear, it didn't come from God. All right, don't be afraid. I love this. You know this story. You know what's gonna happen. Peter says, uh, Lord, if it's you, command me to walk on the water. Lord, if it's you, Lord, I wanna come. And he says, he says to him, come on now, come, come. Get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water. Don't forget that, right? We want to talk about him sinking and all that. He was a, okay, so, you know, the, the, the disciples, when he comes back in dripping wet, could have said, oh, Peter, tell us how to walk on the water. How come only one person got out of the boat? Why didn't all 12 of them get out of the boat, was dancing on that water? You know, there's only one that, that had enough, uh, you know, I'm faster, so I got to watch how I say this, but they, they had enough uh, gumption. How's that? Is that a good word? Look it up. I don't even know if it's a real word. Hey, he had enough gumption, all right? Gumption. I don't even know where I heard that word, but I like that word. He had enough gumption to, to, to get out of that boat. Do you have enough gumption to get out of your boat? Your little, little safety of your little home? Do you have enough gumption to get out there and tell people about Jesus? Get out there. We're on a journey right there. See that right there? This is a little message. This is a little subliminal message. You're on a journey. Oh, look at that revelation too, Okay. I don't know what that is, so don't look at that. Okay, all right, back to the program. All right, so come on, come on. He goes walking on the water, but you know what happens. You know what happens. Um, so Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid, began to sink. Lord save me. 
And you know, I could preach now. You know, not, all, all pastors will take it now. Keep your eyes on Jesus. When you get your eyes off Jesus, you sink and all that stuff. All that's true. I get my eyes off Jesus and I freak out. I get my eyes off Jesus and I get mean. I get my eyes off of Jesus and I start to cuss a lot. I get my eyes off Jesus, I start to drink a lot. I start getting my eyes off Jesus and I'm a mean person. Right? I know who I am without Jesus. Without Jesus, I'm in jail. Without Jesus, I'm a terrible person. Without Jesus, I'm I'm a I'm in a biker club and I'm a, I'm a complete lost person with no family and no friends. All right, and so that's without Jesus. With Jesus, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right, so so I look to Jesus. So so you look to Him. Save me, and when you feel like you're sinking, do what it says here. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Jesus immediately, he didn't, now this, I like Jesus today. Jesus immediately, he did not just go, oh, dude, you made your bed lie in it. I know, I know, you're getting mouth full of water. <laughs> spit it out, spit it out. He didn't do any of that. Immediately, re, immediately he reaches out his hand. Immediately he took him and says, oh, you have little faith. Why'd you doubt? Why'd you doubt? You got this. You didn't have to do. Why did you doubt? I'm not going to criticize this guy. I'm the, I am this guy. All right. I do this a lot. They got in the boat and the wind, the wind ceased and they began to worship God. And truly you are the son of God, they say. Now in John's gospel, it says immediately uh, the boat was at the land. All right. So immediate. So, so that the way the wind stopped. Okay. This all stopped and all of a sudden, bam, they're on the land. Okay, that's a miracle in itself. Okay, the, the walking on the water. He walked on the water. He sank. He walked all the way back. I bet he didn't get his eyes off Jesus the second time. All right, got in the boat. Now, when they crossed over, they came to Gennesareth, uh, and they're a place that recognized him. And, and he he sent around to all the region and brought him to all who were sick, implored him, and and uh, da, 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 da. okay, so informed the touch of fringe of his garment, and he made people well. Okay, I just want to finish the chapter there. But let me let me tell you, this is what I talked about on Sunday a little bit, is this. As you're going to take this, and as we walk through this, the church today, the church today uh, is in a very difficult storm right now. The church today is in a storm. Understand this. Here's the first thing. Write this down. Jesus sees us. Jesus is up on the mountain watching these guys. Jesus sees us. Jesus is praying for us. He ever lives to make intercession for us, the Bible says. He's praying. He's there. He's rooting for us. Jesus sees us. We don't do this alone. He's right there. I said to uh, uh, the crowd uh, last Thursday night, I said, you're, you're only as far as the arm length away because uh, Jesus is only arm length away because you're the only one that can push him away. All right. That's how far he is. He's only arm length away. Okay. He's right there. We are in. Second thing is we are in a storm. This is a storm. Look around. Whenever, when has ever the church has been closed down like they are right now? All right, we're in a storm. Third thing is this, it's at their darkest hour, three to six in the morning, at their darkest hour, he shows up. But understand this, he was always there. He was always like a good father, always available. They're not going to sink. Could you imagine that? And the boat sank and all the apostles drowned. And Jesus now begins to go find more apostles. That ain't going to happen. Okay, that's not going to happen. You know, our times are in God's hands. In the darkest hour, God is there. He's there. Even when you don't think he's there, he's there. Here's the fourth thing is this, um, is that we, uh, are we going to stay safely in the boat? Okay. Are we going to be the disciples safely in the boat? Or are we going to get out where the adventure is at? Are we going to stay safely in the boat? Or are we going to get out there and do things for the gospel? Lord, help us to know how to do that. The, the, the next thing is this, is that he calms the storms. He calms the storms in this life. He calms the storms. And the last thing is this, uh, we will get to our destination. We will get to our destination. Isn't that good? That's a good, that's a good, that's good preacher notes right there. I'm just telling you. All right. That's a good passage right there. All right. The storms of life. We go through the storms of life. Look at that. Look at that Bible study. You got that in 20 minutes, man. And there was no extra cost on any of this. All right. Man, it's a storm. I get it. I understand. There's also a God that loves you a lot, that loves you a lot, that walks with you through this journey. And you are not alone. All right. There, there, is, there is a church family, okay, 
Now, whatever church you go to, if it's a Christian church that believes this word, you need to stay there. You need to support that pastor, pray for that pastor, and you need to be a you need to be a, a an encouragement right now. There's a lot of pastors that are quitting the ministry. There's a lot of those that are have gotten just they're shipwrecked their faith because what do I do, Lord? What do I do? No, no, I'm a I'm a you know, you know, I'm a guy. Go get it. All right. I will go make something happen. If things ain't happen, I'll set something on fire and make them happen. All right. Okay. I don't, you know, that's just my personality. I've always been like that. I'll make something happen. But some, some, I have a lot of pastor friends. And I know some are really walking in discouragement. Pray for your pastor. Pray for the pastors that are out there. If you go to a church, go encourage your pastor. Whether they're open or not, I believe they ought to be open, 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 open. All right. But uh, not all churches are like that. And not all churches are ready to be open or are prepared to be open. I get that, all right? Go ask your pastor. Pastor, how can I help you uh, prepare to be open? Because you're going to be open at some point. How can I prepare you to be open? Hey, and if you're in the Salt Lake area, won't you tell your pastor, hey, Pastor Terry at Calvary Chapel, Salt Lake City, he said right on the right on the air, he said he wants to help you. And I do want to help you. I'm helping a lot of churches right now, all right? We got some things dialed in. We know how to do social distancing. We're working on it with the kids. Every, every ministry in our church is open right now, all right? We, we, we got some good things going, and we're learning some things in this journey. Not that we got it all together, but hey, because we're in this together. But we're just trying to do this, all right? We're in the midst of this storm, all right? Um, I'm going to get outside the boat and do what I can do to walk on the water. And I'm going to drown. I'm going to look to Jesus. I'm going to ask him to help me. I know he's faithful. I know that he's with us. I know that it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. You got this. You got this. You got this. You get out there and you share the love of Jesus. If we can help you, and you're in the Salt Lake area, if we can help you, come see us. We will help you any way we can. We will help you. I'm not going to give you money. Stop asking for money. All right? All you people that keep asking me for money, I'm not giving you money. All right? Stop asking for money. I'll pray for you. I'll be there. Silver and gold have I none. But what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, walk with us. Okay? How's that? Ah. Lord, we love you. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for your beautiful day you've given us, Lord. Help us to follow you. Thank you for the things that we're learning. You're faithful, Lord. You're faithful, always faithful. And we trust in you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, say it out loud. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Hey, we'll pick up the story next time in the next chapter. God bless you guys. Again, Calvary Chapel, Salt Lake City, if you're in Salt Lake area, come see us. We got, we're there on Sunday morning, 9, 11, and 1. We got three services in the morning. All right, I'd encourage you to come to 9 or 1. 11 is, if you're going to come to the 11 o'clock service, you need to come early, all right, because you're not going to make it in the main sanctuary, all right? We're going to be in one of the overflow rooms, all right, which is, which is okay, which is you just see me on television, all right? I look beautiful. I look better on television, you know, see? I look better on television. All right, so, uh, but, but there's still the fellowship still all going on there. Wednesday night, Wednesday night. We're just getting ready to start the book of Daniel on Wednesday. I just finished the book of Re finishing up the book of Revelation. I've got just a little bit more. I'm almost done. Book of Revelation in the book of Daniel on Wednesday night. On Thursday night, we're out of the thrift store. 7800 South and about 3500 West is Calvary Thrift Store. Come see us out there on Thursday nights. We're doing uh, major distributions out there. We're passing out food. We're passing out clothes. We're giving clothing out. Uh, we have all different things each week, something a little different, and uh, and I'm always teaching the Word. I'm always standing there as loud as I can, preaching Jesus, and we have good worship out there. Um, if it's raining, call us. We'll tell you what's going on. We're still trying to navigate the ratings, the, the, the raining season that's coming. All right, so, and so, and there's other things that we're doing. All right, so if you need food, come see us. We have lots of food. All right, just, there you go. I got to quit. All right. God bless you guys. Go live for Jesus. He loves you a lot. We'll see you next time. God bless.